After deleting all of his videos in early February, Josh went straight back to uploading the same content as before The Purge. Doing vocal covers and having trouble with Photo Booth, his video recording software. Hold on a second. Really, Photo Booth? You're really gonna freeze up on me again? Come on, Photo Booth, unfreeze. Unfreeze, Photo Booth. There it goes. Holy fucking shit. I have to stop the song because Photo Booth. Again? Really? <sighs> I keep having to, I, I literally had to pause the song because Photo Booth is freezing up on me and it's beginning to piss me off. Come on, Photo Booth, cooperate with me here. Jesus fucking Christ. Ooh. Hold on a second, we're not going to screensaver mode. Hold on, I had to pause the song. We're not doing this, we're not doing this. Go back to screensaver mode. Get off of this shit, please. I hate when my computer monitor goes to sleep in the middle of a fucking video. Like, really? Come on. <sighs> okay. Come on. Get out of there. Get out of screen saver mode, please. Product reviews. These right here are Jimmy Dean breakfast croissant sandwiches. Yeah, these things are microwavable. And guitar videos. He would also remake his cigarette trick introduction video on his channel. As you could have predicted, nothing was going to change. But this type of content was fine because this is the type of content Josh's fans loved from Josh. Josh would thankfully keep making outdoor videos with his phone, which was a breath of fresh air, no pun intended. I'm headed to the Ash Cigar Store to pick up a stogie. Well, the reason why I can't go to the Cigar Rialto store anymore is because the owner, Nell, passed away. He was a good man and he uh, had an awesome little shop. I still have a Zippo and a cigar cutter I bought from him. Yeah. And it's 4.43. All right. Mm, smells good in here. It's <laughs> had a couple of gentlemen needs though. All righty, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm, have a wonderful day. You too. She said my lyrics and my dick were the bomb. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that one scene where the main character is drunk on red wine. He's like, Ratatouille? It sounds like Ratatouille. <laughs> Josh would seemingly give up on his job search after only getting one call back from an unknown location, most likely a fast food restaurant. In a strange turn of events, reminiscent of the Liquid Chris saga from the Chris Chan universe, a fan slash troll created a channel called King Cobra JFS, spelt with a K, and began recreating some of Josh's videos. What's good, YouTube? So as you can see, the fidget spinner I was working on came along quite nicely. Quite nicely indeed. I painted it green. I've decided I'm gonna make a can crush video. Here we go. Behold, YouTube, the powers of a real wizard. So this is the real King Cobra signing out. King Cobra with a K also called out Josh and said that he was the real King Cobra as he had uploaded videos after Josh deleted all of his content. Josh ended up addressing the fake King Cobra 
and Josh would attempt to prove he was the real King Cobra. What's good, YouTube? It's just been brought to my attention that some troll has been stealing... Some troll has been stealing my identity. This so-called King Cobra JFS, spelt completely wrong, has been going online and making videos pretending to be me. Now, ever since my last channel got deleted and this one got started, uh, I think that's around the time he started too. But if you check my videos, you'll notice that I started first. If you check the times on my videos, you'll notice that mine were posted before any of his were, which is all really the proof that you need. So this is a call out for you, fake Cobra, to back off and quit trying to be me. And on top of that, I got some poor imitator and this is a count called King Cobra JFS, spelt exactly like mine. And instead of spelling Cobra with a C, this YouTube user spells King Cobra JFS the Cobra, and that YouTube user's name is spelled with a K. And there's nothing you can do about it, YouTube. Technology fucks with you, people fuck with you, it's just part of the YouTube experience. Um, if they think it's gonna stop me from making videos, they're sadly mistaken. That phony cobra wants to challenge me to a frozen Dorito challenge. No, sir. I'm gonna raise the ante. That other phony cobra went and bought store fried Doritos. We could do a little bit better than that, YouTube. Yeah, buddy. Woo! That's what's up, YouTube. Yeah! As you may have heard, the so-called real King Cobra, spelt completely wrong, might I add, has decided to challenge me to a spicy food challenge. The Doritos loaded. However, that phony Cobra doesn't even have the kitchen skill. He doesn't even have the kitchen skills, YouTube, to make them himself. Now that's what I call a Doritos Loaded. We have 12 different types of hot sauces. We have jalapeno, we have ghost peppers, there's a bunch of others too. And of course, I'm adding my own personal favorite, Swampadelic. Yeah, buddy! Yeah, buddy! Check out that cross section. So, to the phony Cobra, I challenge the fake Cobra to battle. And here's why, YouTube. I challenge him because with my shredding skills, I know there'll be no doubt that I'm the real Cobra after I destroy him. That's how you do a spicy Doritos loaded challenge, YouTube. And what did I get from the mailman but a gift from fan of mine, Vapor, and it says to the real King Cobra to the real underlined King Cobra. Oh, from Vapor. Who's who's the phony now? So I'm not sure what this is. Uh, I'm gonna do an unboxing. No way, YouTube. I think it's a sex doll. Oh. Uh, so it, it appears. That he sent me a Gibson Liz Paul. Uh, that's all right, thanks, I guess. <gasps> and he sent me cash. 20 bucks, YouTube. That's more than I got on my last Wendy's paycheck. Thank you, sir. 
King Cobra with a K would end up doing the deep fried Doritos challenge that Josh had failed. Josh a few days later would watch King Cobra with a K and accepted the guitar challenge. And I've already seen it, his guitar playing is so pathetic, I'm gonna school this motherfucker on some real guitar playing. The fake King Cobra JFS Don fucked up. The first mistake he made was saying that he worked at Wendy's. If he's pretending to be me, most motherfuckers know that I got fired from Wendy's because of some YouTube bullshit. But then come to find out YouTube that I didn't just I didn't get fired from Wendy's just because of what YouTube trolls were saying about me. It turns out they were remodeling the place. They were no longer in need of a lobby attendant, so they fired me because of that and because of the YouTube bullshit. And, um, <laughs> the little spicy Doritos loaded challenge that I did, apparently the uh, fake King Cobra JFS drank an entire bottle of Swampadelic. I hope your asshole still burns from that, you motherfucker. I saw his pathetic attempt at a, a guitar challenge video, and it was so bad. It was so bad. He was so bad at guitar, I'm like, bro, he's gonna get slaughtered. Josh would then make a video shredding on his guitar with his friend Alex Anderson. Alex would hilariously claim that he was related to both gunslinger Jesse James and, of course, Adolf Hitler. What's good, YouTube? Check this out. Look at how my widow's peak is regrowing so nicely. And this is the weird thing of it, YouTube, is this side is growing faster than this side. And they're both starting to grow back quite nicely. You can definitely see. You know what just, I'm saying? Just remember all them motherfuckers that are running their mouths trying to be you and trying to give that dude attention, man. They're just jealous. Yeah. You know. Fuck, dude. They just want to fuck with you because they know you're autistic. It's like motherfuckers fuck with me because I'm epileptic. Yeah. There's motherfuckers that say, oh, look, there's the four-eyed funky fish. Motherfuckers, dude. Fucking, it's like, dude, you know what? Fuck you, man. Hell, man. Just saying, people, you know, just saying. Why do you have to exercise when you know you're the cousin of Hulk Hogan? Hell, man, related to Hulk Hogan. Are you? Literally. Hulk Hogan and Jesse James. Damn. Yeah, hell, most people don't believe it, but fucking Adolf Hitler's one of my great uncles. I feel sorry for you on that. Like, he barely even played any fucking guitar in his video. And it's so fucking obvious he wants attention, but if you're gonna fucking call somebody out on guitar who's been playing since junior high, and you barely play anything on the fucking guitar, you're just a pathetic excuse for a human being, really. Hell, all these shit talkers, I wonder if they eat shit for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah, they probably do. They probably do. They probably do. More than likely. Alex would return a few days later, and said some risque racist jokes. My buddy Alex, what do you think of that chicken though? Not bad. Hell yeah. Bad. This right here would be a Negro's favorite lunch. Don't be racist on my channel, oh, please. No. Sorry about that, folks. Some of my friends were um, just a wee bit racist. I ain't racist, I was just fucking making a joke. I'm sorry. It's alright. King Cobra with a K would one-up Josh once again by doing the T-Rex burger challenge from Wendy's. What's good, YouTube? And, you know, to really say thanks to all my subs, um, today I'll be doing uh, something that the uh, phony King Cobra has been claiming he was planning on doing for a long time and he's never quite done. Oh wait a second. Oh yeah. That's a halfy. Just found a halfy you two. That's most certainly what's up. I'm just about to hit the gym. So I can be the uh well so I can remain the swollest uh motherfucker in Casper. T-Rex burger. Ah. You're, you're talking to Cobra HD, baby. 
only the best for my fans. In fact, the reason I haven't uploaded a video all week, the reason I haven't uploaded a video all week, YouTube, is because me, Fun Size Felicia, and Stephanie, I've been getting freaky all week. I've been too busy boning down on these two hot goth chicks to make any videos. Well, we made one video. I've got it on my iPod Touch so I can watch it at my convenience. But you won't be seeing that. <laughs> uh, Donald Trump, you should make weed legal. Or I'll cast a dark spell on you. During Josh's feud with King Cobra with a K, Josh's friend Alex Campbell made his on-screen debut, off-screen and coughing. So thank you to all of you who wished me a, a happy birthday. Yesterday was my birthday. Now today, I also used some of my birthday money to mail Ozzy Osbourne his wand. That's what's up. And then I walked from the post office to Little Caesars so I could do a food review for you on YouTube. Well, on the way back to my apartment, I ran into my buddy Alex Campbell on March 25th, and then walking home from a friend's house March 25th, I found $20 in a puddle of water near the curb of the sidewalk. I went into Second Street Liquor Store and I bought a bottle of 360 Peach and 360 Bing Cherry Vodka. Now, my buddy Alex Campbell over here has got a uh, bit of a cold he's been trying to fight. Yeah. After Josh lashed out at King Cobra with a K and Josh's magical powers took out this troll. What's good, YouTube? As you as you probably as you've probably noticed, I've been away for about a week now. Some of you were saying that that, that, that phony King Cobra had defeated me, and some of you were saying that I had given up. I'm making videos, but here I am. Uh, so I was sick for a week, and also there's been uh, something wrong with my uh, my computer. Hi, Sean. Hey, Cobra. What have you been up to lately, Sean? Oh, you know, just hanging around. Well, I feel like I'm at work right now, to be honest. Why is that? Because I'm used to being around assholes with no lies. And today's no different. <laughs> Shut up, Sean. Like I said, I'm used to dealing with assholes with no lies, and today's no exception. <laughs> Alex started hanging out at Josh's apartment and began appearing in numerous videos and started to get on Josh's fans' nerves as Alex was very annoying and lied about the dumbest things. What's good, YouTube? So I'm hanging out with some friends of mine. My buddy Alex Campbell and his girlfriend. Listen, no, Wendy. You don't do the puppet. The bus stands on the carpet. You don't want to do the bedroom. You were sucked down. You were sucked down. No. You know what, bro? What? 
I give you fucking props. You know why? Why is that? That guy, every music video he would ever see him in, he's wearing these scat, these fucking tight ass skinny jeans. <laughs> and you tried. You're damned just being snockered to sing that song. I remember when I used to wear skinny jeans in high school, right? Yeah. I felt like my balls were in my throat. I couldn't speak. And I'm not wearing skinny jeans. I'm wearing black Wrangler or black jeans. So I, I couldn't speak, let alone sing, bro. And that's the person you tried to honestly uh, do a good song for, which, mind you, you kept up with the beat. You kept up with his sounds, his voice. You were there every second of the way. I noticed in this video that I can only barely hear the background music for that song from your headphones. So I was like, you know what? He's actually keeping up with him. Maybe if his balls were in his throat, he would sound just like him. But my balls are not in my throat, so I guess that's my only downfall. No, they're, they're, they're deep down between your legs, right? <laughs> <laughs> In early April, Josh would announce some good news. Homeboy Scotty and his girlfriend Tina were having their first child. Just what society needed. You wanna say hi to YouTube? Hey YouTube! <laughs> Ooh, I got my Starbucks, hashtag white girl status. <laughs> uh, that's my homegirl Tina. She's uh, carrying my homeboy Scotty's kid. Nobody talks shit on Tina YouTube, she's a sweetheart. You talk shit on me, you're talking shit. You talk shit on her, you're talking shit on me and my other friend Scotty. So fuck you if you're gonna talk shit. If you're drinking anything while you're smoking a tobacco pipe, it's kind of like taking a drink with a dip in your mouth, YouTube. It's a certain set of skills required. God damn it. Well, that was real smooth, wasn't it? Stupid, clumsy, autistic me. Fuck, I hate spilling shit. Oh, well, shit happens, otherwise we wouldn't poop. I'm going to go on a little tangent, so please stay with me. It's not a secret that Josh smokes weed, and it's also not a secret that smoking weed in Wyoming is illegal. When Josh brings up smoking weed, he will often say, when I take a trip to Colorado, as a code to his fans. It has often been a conspiracy theory that Josh has been recording videos of him smoking weed in the event weed were to be made legal in the state of Wyoming. Although there was no proof that Josh had been making these videos, in 2020, Josh's secret would be revealed. In 2020, Josh privated every single one of his videos but then made them all public again. Sadly for Josh, he had dozens of videos of him smoking weed from 2017 and 18. These videos appeared as brand new videos and all of Josh's subscribers was alerted of them. Josh's first weed smoking video was recorded in early April 2017 with his friends Alex Campbell and Alex Anderson RIP. Ricky, what we have here, ladies and gentlemen, we have a ratchet head full of... Uh, I do believe that's cannabis. Chronic. Blueberry bubblegum. <laughs> yeah. Look how nicely that white walled YouTube. Oh, yes, 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 yes. <coughs> What's good, YouTube? So check this out. This is my buddy Jeremy's bong, and I'm holding on to it for him until he's off probation. And uh, me and a couple of my homies here are smoking out of it. Gotta love capsule videos, man. Who, your two buddy Alex? <laughs> yeah. You know my buddy Marshall? Yeah. The gay Marshall? Yeah. Yeah. Fuck it. I don't give a shit what someone's preference is. As long as they ain't coming on to me, we're golden. Right, and I tell him that about a lot of my friends that I introduce him to, like, hey man, I've, I've told him that you're gay, but just don't try coming to coming on to him or it'll piss him off. 
Although Alex Campbell was annoying the piss out of Josh's fans. I was like, guess what, bro? What? The other day I got so tired of people fucking, like, I got thinking about, like, why do people have to bully other people? It, it made me mad, and I was just walking along trying to get signs, bro. Yeah. And I had my military jacket on, the one that uh, I got. Yeah. And uh, some guy was driving by, and he was hard, and he had his big dog out. He was like, fucking hoser, and I was just like, hey, come back and save my face. And he looked out his window like, really? <laughs> right? What's good, YouTube? It's your boy King Cobra here, hanging out with my buddy Alex Campbell. Whoop whoop. And, uh, well, a buddy brought some alcohol over, and we have. Oh, we got two beer bottles besides this one, but we got some Fleshman's. Well, my pop tobacco did not get in here today, damn it. But hopefully tomorrow. Look at that. Mmm. Nice. Brand new. Never been used. Won't be used until that pipe tobacco gets here. <laughs> All right? Look at that, YouTube. Look at that, YouTube. Just to make this one drink. That's a half, a half pint. Oh, shit. Oh. Well, less than half, isn't it? A little bit less than half now. I mean, I... You spilled a little bit on the carpet. It's all good. I spilled a little bit on the carpet, but you know what? That part of the carpet will be clean and sanitized. There you go. I know why YouTube, nobody fucks with me, YouTube, okay? I have a Glock 45 sitting in my fucking house right fucking now with a 17 round clip. You wanna fuck with me? Go ahead. That's plain and simple. Speaking of guns, man, I wanna get my double barrel shotgun fixed. My grandfather, people, was a master gunsmith. He went through World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. Everything I've learned from him, I can apply to today. Alex Anderson, on the other hand, would lend some comic relief and tell some hilarious stories during Josh's videos. Yeah, man, fucking today on the bus, this fucking dude was touching this eight-year-old little girl inappropriately, sexually, and I looked at him and I told him, hey, man, why are you touching that little girl like that? And he told me, oh, I just needed to cop a fill, man. And I told him, well, you shouldn't be touching a fucking female like that in the first place. Let alone an eight-year-old. Especially an eight-year-old little girl. And... Fucking, I told him, I see you touch her like that again, dude. I'm gonna fuck you up. And then her mom's like, Well, thank you for standing up for my daughter, even though you don't know her. And I told her, You're welcome, you know. And the little girl even thanked Alex. She's yeah. like, She said, Thanks for sticking up for me. That felt uncomfortable. And I'm like, I imagine it did. Right. And, and it's like these, this fucking dude at the library today was pissed off at his girlfriend. And he, he hit one elderly lady, and I asked him, why the hell did you hit that old lady? Oh, man, I'm fucking pissed off, you fucking four-eyed faggot. And he was calling me names and shit, and I told him, well, I see you hit another fucking woman, dude, and I'm going to whoop your ass. And then this this other elderly lady came past, and he fucking just straight up cold clocked that lady. And I was like, all right, dude, that's it. And I fucking, I hit him with my left hand, and he didn't drop. And I hit him with my right hand, he dropped. And then I fucking hit him again, and he started crying like a little bitch. <laughs> fucking kicked him in his face and his nose was crooked and, and I didn't even get arrested because the officers are like well thanks for standing up for elderly ladies and the elderly ladies told me well thank you for standing up for me because I dislike dudes who hit women and I was like yeah so do I right oh did I tell you I seen this this fucking this gay dude today fucking stick he stuck cantaloupes in his shirt at Walmart and he was wearing a mini skirt what the fuck yeah dude he bent over to pick something up and all you seen was fucking ball sack Oh. And my buddy Carl's like, man, that's fucking nasty, man. Yeah. You know, if some gay dude were to hit on me, I'd be polite about it the first time. I'd be like, no, bro, I'm straight. Fuck off. This is your only warning. Right. Second time, you're getting your fucking ass kicked. Like, I'm not going to put up with it, dude. I told, I told that dude. I was like, dude, I'm straight. I, I love pussy. So... You keep bugging me and you're gonna eat my knuckles. Right. And the motherfucker's like, oh, well, you ain't gotta be so rude to a woman. I was like, dude, you ain't a fucking woman. Right, you fucking. Tr That's what, get, man, I'm not here to disrespect on transgender, but if they wanna be delusional and call themselves the sex they aren't, go ahead, you know, more power to you, but I really don't care, you know? I mean I don't, I don't judge gay people because I have friends and cousins that are gay. Right. It's just when they fucking hit on me and shit, it's like, fuck you, man, get the fuck away from me. Oh, it's like, you know, you can change your outside body, but you can't change your DNA structure. Exactly. Dude, hanging out with uh, my buddy Alex over here. How's it going? 
And uh, he can't drink these because he's epileptic, but I, on the other hand, can. You can take a few swigs for me since today's my birthday. Right, but he just turned 23. But yeah, this is the Monster Mutant. This is Mark. Got any more of that pizza? I'm out of pizza, dude. Oh, okay. Yeah. We even had a rare moment when both Alex's and Steve appeared in one of Josh's videos. And there are some women that are just flat out creeped out by me, so, you know. Which is kind of crazy. I think any woman on their right mind should be attracted to you. Oh, I appreciate that, man. Thanks, but... That is, that is a statement that I... I'm not trying to sound gay, man, but if I was a woman, I'd flirt with you because you got, you're got a pretty good looking dude. <laughs> Uh, eh. I second that motion. <laughs> yeah, except for she's if she's below the age of eighteen, I'm not doing it. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> Was she? I didn't stop to ask. And if they try saying yeah, tell them I want proof. Show right. Your ID. Show <laughs> exactly. And you know how you can tell an ID's fake? How's that? They don't glow underneath a black light. There you go. On top of that, YouTube, there are a lot of chicks. I talked about this in a previous video. There are a lot of chicks who walk around with fake IDs trying to get with older dudes. Or and go to bars. That's right, exactly. Go to the fucking bars to avoid that shit. You ask me, that's just a setup. Yeah, like fucking. Okay, here's the thing. It's a setup to get for a sting operation. Yeah, no shit. Arrested. <laughs> no right, shit. Right. Basically, tubes. If they look too young, stay away. Yeah. Don't even stop and ask. Right. Yeah. Because that's just trouble. If they're open. young and they're wearing clothes like a fucking tramp, because if you stop and start flirting with them, then... You're caught. Yeah. Instantly. Girls that are real young that wear clothes like they're a fucking tramp or a slut are just doing that to target you. I don't come down pedophilia. That shit is wrong and it should never be performed by any adult. I fucking hate people who are pedophiles. Right, fuck pedophiles, man. Sex offenders, fucking... I beat the fuck out this sex offender one time because fucking... Oh, I'm not a sex offender, and then he touches my fucking two-year-old little nephew sexually. And I was like, hey, motherfucker, I thought you said you wasn't a fucking pedophile. Oh, I'm not. Bull fucking shit, why'd you just grab my fucking two-year-old little nephew's pecker? Uh, I was just making sure he didn't have no scabs. I was like, yeah, right, dude. You know, and then I let it just go at that point, and then again, he fucking... Grabs my fucking two-year-old little nephew's pecker again, and I'm like, all right, dude, that's it. Get the fuck out. He's like, this ain't your house. This is your sister's house. And I'm like, bullshit, motherfucker. It might be my sister's house, but that's my nephew. Like, you get out me before and I kill touched you. him twice. Get out before I and kill you. And get the fuck out before I kick your fucking ass. And For real. You, and make you kiss my motherfucking 45 barrel. And <laughs> he's all like, your brother's making me leave. And my sister's like, Alex, why are you making him leave? I was like, because he touched Ryan's fucking pecker twice. You know, that's my little he nephew. His name him. is Ryan. He yeah, could have killed him because that's called castle law. And she's all like, he's oh yeah, well, family. And then she straight up looked at that dude and was like, get the fuck out. I beat the fuck out of a fucking pedophile in the county jail because he's all like, oh man, I, I would love to touch a little girl right now. And I was beat like, dude, that's senseless. fucking nasty, man. I'd beat him senseless. Why the fuck would you do that? Because you can't get no pussy? Oh, uh, because it's it's still a type of pussy. Dude, go fuck a goat. It's like, that it's like fuck, dude. You want to fucking fuck something? Fucking find a toilet paper roll and some fucking lubrication. <laughs> fuck. Yeah. But leave the children alone. They have a life to live in. Uh, I have friends proper who... Proper way to grow up. They don't need that shit. See, yeah. I, have, I have some friends who have done time in prison for fucking... They have to register as a sex offender. But I know for a motherfucking fact that the reason they're my friend is because I know for a fact that they're not gonna do that. You know my buddy Carl, that fat dude? Yeah. Yeah, he was in fucking prison for sexual, sexually molesting a chick, a little girl is what they had said, because she fucking wanted it. And you know, she had a fucking fake ID and everything, and he got fucking set up, so. And I yeah. told him, when he's all like, man, I'll be a friend, man. And I was like, well, if you're a fucking, Registered sex offender. I see you touch a little kid in front of me, dude. I'm gonna fucking knock your ass out. Okay, yeah. man. And he has not ever done it since. Yeah. A lot of bullying. And there's a lot of fucking bullies in schools nowadays, man. And I remember when I was in high school, after I was fucking diagnosed with grand mal seizure disorder with epilepsy. 
fucking I went to school one day and had a fucking seizure at school and all these other kids fucking started oh hey look it's the four eyed worm I was gonna say fucking four eyed worm because they seen me have a fucking seizure the moral to the story is is maybe that <clears throat> the schools should get funded in late April Josh had some sad news he broke his beloved floral chair after punching a hole in it well my chair is seen its final day. I was angry at something else and I punched a hole in the top cushion and my fist broke through and and um, it was pretty much unsavable at this point. So I had to get rid of it. Over trimmed my goatee so I had to shave it all off again. I'm so good at guitar, it's a wonder I'm not swimming in pussy right now. I'm just saying. Josh ended up sitting on his guitar case until he was gifted another chair by a friend a week later. What is up, YouTube? So if you see for yourself that I got a uh, replacement chair, it's got studs in the arms, and both arms have a hole in them on either side, right here, and the uh, right arm is a little wobbly. There we go, I just pushed it back into place. There we go fix that issue. Well, the right arm was wobbly, but I went, popped it back into place. There we go. In late April, Josh began appearing on a small podcast called Epercast, and he was paid $20 per appearance by the host, Tofa. King Cobra and Cottonmouth here. We're Hello. About, we're about to be on Keepercast here in a bit. This is Mr. Goat, a.k.a. Cottonmouth, coming at you with Keepercast! Cherry Pop Tobacco and Keepercast. So yeah, I'll provide the link while this video uploads to YouTube, and we'll catch you later. Good evening, and welcome, Tubes and Keepercast. An opening song dedicated to Keepercast. Keepercast! Keepercast! We are the Keepercast! Keepers of the internet, Keepercast, Keepercast, this is our podcast. That's a good uh, theme song. Welcome to Keepercast, episode two. Uh... Hey. Hey, what up? Oh, that's oh, Fun Size Sean Felicia. Sean. Yeah, Fun yeah. Size Felicia, yeah. And then yeah, <laughs> you, kiss, you kissed her so good her hair fell out. <laughs> I, was doing that. I was doing that for comedic effect really that was it was funny man uh um yeah so tell me a little bit about what happened to the to the first doll well the first doll wasn't shipped properly there was a huge hole in the box and like one of the fingers was like practically falling off oh fuck and <laughs> no i don't think i fucked it to death no all i gotta say all i gotta say is when i walked here like when that happened that day happened like uh -huh. in the fucking dumpster at first, before, like, people put the trash in there, like, it looked like someone just, like, fucking mutilated a person. <laughs> <laughs> there was, like, a leg over there, an arm over there, a head chilling. Yeah, thanks for having me on your show, man. Later, yeah, man. Later. Bye, boys. Zoophilia is a wonderful human-animal bondage that should be made legal in equality to gay marriage or same-sex marriage. In early May, Josh announced on Facebook that he was starting his new job soon, and also made a video talking about his new job alongside his new colleague, Alex Campbell. I got a job. I got a job, $10 an hour, washing dishes. Hell yeah. This will allow me to get my shotgun fixed, among other things. <laughs> Uh, you trolls, 
You try to fucking ruin my life. You knock me down a couple pegs, but I get the fuck back up. I want to give a shout out to my buddy Alex Campbell who helped me get this job, bro. Thank you, bro, for helping me get this job. And my dad said as soon as I get a job, he's going to give me back my debit card. So I'll have the money for my, all the debit card for my account again. Josh wouldn't say where he worked, but it was revealed quite quickly that he was working as a dishwasher at the office bar and grill. Josh almost immediately got a crush on a waitress named Danny and also began having issues with the head chef, a woman named Melissa. On Mother's Day, Josh wished his biological mother Laura a happy Mother's Day. Almighty thunderstorm come forth to me on this video I film on my phone. Almighty thunder pounding outside. Strike for me loud on camera, please. You're witnessing real magic, you two. I'm taking my magic wand. I'm pointing it at my window. Almighty thunder flash. Let's turn the light off so we can see it, YouTube. Okay, watch this, YouTube. Got the King Cobra playing with thunder and lightning. Because I can. Almighty thunder. I got the camera pointing at my window. Are you watching this shit, YouTube? You see that? Boom. Thunder come forth. Boom. In early May, Josh posted on Facebook that King Cobra with a K was back alive and was on KeeperCast making fun of him. Shortly after King Cobra with a K appeared on KeeperCast, Josh would end up making a video with Alex Campbell, who now dubbed himself Warlord and proved to his fans that he was the real King Cobra. And when I watched the newest episode of KeeperCast, I noticed that the phony King Cobra decided to make an appearance. This motherfucker is so delusional. I would like to introduce a good friend of mine, Warlord Campbell, who's been a friend of mine for like three years. What is good, YouTube? I don't give a fuck. This is bullshit. A lot of bullshit. I don't give a fuck. My name isn't Warlord for nothing. Don't like me? Don't like my fucking tour chick? I'll kiss you in the face with it. If not, I got brothers everywhere. Right? Because we're warriors. The phony King Cobra is such a delusional fucking retard. The phony King Cobra JFS accused one of my good friends of smoking spice, and he doesn't, obviously. Like, this dude's clueless, and eventually the phony King Cobra JFS is going to get what's coming to him, and he's going to rue the day he made fun of me. Oh, and I want to interject here, YouTube. I work in a dish pit. I work in a dish pit with the real gothic King Cobra. And if you work in that dish pit, I ain't never seen you there before. So seriously, if you work there, we'll step outside. A lot of the waitresses prefer me over the head dishwasher who's been there for 13 years because I go in there, I get my shit done. After Josh's video response, Josh and Warlord smoke some weed. Look at that, YouTube. Isn't that a pretty little nug? It smells like weed. Smells better than this. <laughs> Sorry, smart ass humor. Yeah. This is my new pipe. I want to capsule video of this shit right here. Yeah, buddy. 
Well, in the rule of a capsule video, you will not see this video until marijuana is legal in Wyoming, which could be a year from now for all we fucking know. <clears throat> or hope for, you know. <laughs> People are saying that these trolls did me a favor by getting me fired from Wendy's. No, the fuck they didn't. Because even if trolls hadn't submitted the false customer complaints, they still would have let me go because of what they were doing, and it's whatever. I'm not complaining. I got a better job anyways now, so... In late April, Josh received his first paycheck from his new job. Predictably, Josh spent all of his money on tobacco. Warlord was present for this video, and showed signs that his sexuality was very questionable considering he was married to his cousin. So I got my first paycheck from my job today, and it wasn't very big, but it was still bigger than I've had in a minute. It was fabulous. I don't know, I just had to say it like that, man, I'm sorry. No, just no, <laughs> just no. Yeah, how does your girlfriend feel about you talking like that? <laughs> she fucking thinks it's funny. She thinks it's funny. Well, there you go. I make fun of her shoes when she's shopping, too. She'd be like, well, what do you think of these, babe? Oh, my God, they're so perfect. And she's just like, come on, quit being a smart ass. I'm seriously, they're, they're perfect for your feet. <laughs> well, how do you mean they're perfect? They fit, don't they? You know, the chick, the chick I cheated on Stephanie with, she's one of those chicks that... You get drunk and you make a mistake, kind of. You know, she wasn't the prettiest and she wasn't that good at it. One of my friends was in their van and the tire went out, so they parked their t they parked their um, van in a parking lot somewhere here in town. He walks to the gas station to fucking air up his spare tire and walk back. And while he's walking there, I offered this chick I was drinking with a cigarette to fuck me, and well, I fucked her actually, and. Uh, yeah. yeah. I was gonna say, bro, if she's fucking you, there's something wrong. <laughs> Josh ended the month complaining about his neighbors who had made several complaints about Josh's smell from his apartment. Reason why I'm upset, YouTube, is because apparently my neighbors were complaining about me. Apparently, my neighbors don't like the smell of my incense. I've never once complained about my neighbors, never once. There's been times where my neighbors have been ridiculously loud at a very inappropriate time. There's times I've heard my neighbors fighting about stupid shit. And I could have called and complained about that to my landlord, but I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Ladies, what's up? There's been times that my neighbors have had very loud sex. And it's like, I don't want to fucking hear that nasty shit. But did I complain to my landlord about it? No, of course not. On the 1st of June, Josh alleged that he had sex with his neighbor's daughter, Tammy, the night prior, but ended up scaring her away by telling her he loved her. Apparently, somebody out there tried to bribe homeboy Scotty with $300. The bribe was for Scotty to release my work information on where I work and shit. That's pretty fucked. And of course Scotty didn't take it. You know, he didn't take the bribe. He was like, fuck you, dude. You know. And, uh, you know, this is a message to all the people out there who hate me to the point where you want to ruin my life. You know, you, you need to take a, a long, hard look at yourself and ask yourself, what the fuck are you doing with your life? It's a good thing Wyoming has an open carry permit. God damn, look at the size of these things. Now, the last chick I slept with probably, probably would have stayed with me if I didn't scare her off. And I didn't mean to scare her off, but I hadn't been laid like seriously, I haven't been laid in a fucking minute and out of fucking nowhere. This smoking hot chick fucks my brains out and the sex is fucking amazing. And I said I love you to her and I just it came out and it scared her away and I'm like, oh damn it. She didn't want to be in a relationship and I scared her away. Nice going, dumbass. 
I'm not going to name names, but yeah. <laughs> In early June, a fan named Tough Grass 2000 created a beautiful comic called King Cobra. Josh was even sent a copy of this limited edition comic book, but he didn't like it because he assumed a troll had made the comic to make fun of him. In early June, Josh had finally had enough with Photo Booth and removed it from his Mac. This would mean his videos going forward would have to be recorded on his phone until his computer was fixed. First of all, YouTube, I want to say fuck Photo Booth. I'll be using my phone to record my videos from now on. I cannot deal with Photo Booth uh, crashing on me. And I'm going to try to delete it from my computer because it serves no purpose other than pissing me off. Josh wasn't just angry at Photo Booth. He would throw more and more temper tantrums in his videos. Look what I got. Chocolate cigarello, or yeah, cigarello. It's not fresh. Photo Booth kept on crashing on me, so I'm like, what the hell? You know, I'm trying to do a cigar review for my YouTube peoples. Oh shit, excuse me. And uh, yeah, as you can see, I got my bike with me, doing a little bit of cruising. God damn it! Sorry about that, YouTube. Uh, I'm sick and tired of it. I'm trying to fucking film a video for YouTube, and I gotta drop my fucking phone. Aggravating. So, would I recommend chocolate Swisher Sweet Cigarellos? The answer is yes. Adam West passed away. <laughs> fucking hiccups. You have to excuse me, YouTube. I got the bad case of the hiccups. And I wish they'd go away, but it's whatever. Um, Adam West passed away after a short battle with Lake with I can't, you know, if I had a hundred dollars, YouTube, if I had a hundred fucking dollars for every time I got told on YouTube, you suck at guitar, you suck at singing, you're a fat, you're a tranny, you're retarded, your videos suck. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'm straight for one thing. I have high functioning retardation. So technically, yes, I'm a retard, but not that retarded. I'm goth. I don't know what the fuck this tranny bullshit is about. They see a heterosexual male who's not afraid to be their goth self. And for some odd reason, it makes people jealous. Although Josh was struggling with his rage, he was doing very well at his new job dishwashing and was given more hours and eventually hired full time. Josh would post on Facebook that he got a black fidget spinner, which were popular with autistic kids around this time. Josh would also go on to thirst trap and complain about the dating scene. Josh ended his string of Facebook posts by taking a picture of his bike in a local fountain. In mid-June, Josh treated his sex doll fun-sized Felicia to a black and green wig. Josh's friend Alex Anderson was there to support Josh's most recent purchase. A couple of weeks later, Josh finally decided to give his girl a bath. On June 28th, Josh sadly announced on Facebook that he had melted his sex doll fun-size Felicia by using the wrong soap. Josh quickly moved on from fun size Felicia and a damaged skin, but was completely up for his fans to buy him another one. What's going on with you, YouTube? It's your boy King Cobra back at you with another video. Unfortunately, fun size Felicia had a bit of an accident. I washed both her heads and her body with the wrong kind of soap. And the soap I used was some organic, super heavy-duty antibacterial soap. And basically, it caused the silicone to melt. Like 80 to 95% of the silicone melted off. And this happened ages ago, man. I was so pissed when it happened. You know, a part of me feels like that's karma for destroying the sex toys that were sent to me, honestly. 
But what sex doll am I saving up for? Boom, right there. $2,174. Now, that's a lot of fucking money to save up for, but I think the end results will definitely be worth it. Now, I deleted my, uh, the doll video because right now I don't want a sex doll. I mean, I have one that I would customize and everything, but right now I gotta consider my options. And after that bullshit with fun size Felicia, I was just like, man, whatever. Some troll pretending to be my fan calling themselves Viper Dude 90 was like, oh, by the way, I have four sex dolls, and the best way to clean them is to use heavy duty antibacterial dish soap. I'm like, alright, thanks for the advice, you know? Why don't you go give fun size Felicia a bath, both her heads and her body? The silicone just melted off completely. And I'm like, God damn it. Like, man, ain't that some bullshit? As everyone predicted, Josh lied about melting fun size Felicia. He texted Exhumed Visions and confessed that he had desecrated and butchered her down to manageable pieces, perhaps because he's psychotic and has anger issues towards women. King Cobra with a K would return after fun size Felicia's demise and made a video with his sex doll, also named Felicia. Um, I really didn't want to make this video, but uh, there's a few things that I really need to address. Uh, so first of all, for those who don't know me, uh, my name is Felicia, other known as, uh, otherwise known as uh, Fun Size Felicia, and uh, I'm a midget. I'm not a child, I'm a midget, and I work at Hot Topic here in Casper. And just recently, uh, King Cobra, spelled with a C, who I'll be referring to as Andrew from this point forward, because that's his real name. Um, so Andrew came out and said I had been melted by soap or something like that. The truth is, you know, I'm obviously not melted. I'm not cut up like a lot of people were speculating. Um, I'm still here. I'm fine. I'm in a safe place right now. I'm, I'm staying with a friend right now. The truth is that I, I you know, I left him. Um, there's only so much tobacco smoke a girl can, uh, you know, inhale in one lifetime. He's tricked me into smoking spice on more than one occasion. And, um, one time, well actually, on more than one occasion, but you didn't hear it from me, um, I'd peek out of the closet, and I saw, I saw him, I saw him and Sean, I saw him and Sean the dummy, getting a little freaky, but you didn't hear that from me. What else did I want to say? Hey, uh, I'm gonna make some bagel bites and, um, some, uh, hot pockets, are you hungry? Oh yeah, that'd be great. Thanks. I'm just making a video. Do you want to say something? Yeah, uh, to the, uh, imposter King Cobra, um, I just wanted to let you know that, um, you know, this is what happens when you don't treat your sexy silicon goddess with the respect that a woman deserves. And now I'm going to show her what a real King Cobra looks like. <laughs> Josh's feud with King Cobra came to blows on a live episode of KeeperCast. The host Topha ended up ruining this confrontation by not instructing Josh how to use Google Hangouts. Although the confrontation was good, the delay made the fight frustrating, and the host Topha was to blame. That's what's up! What's good? Alright. Uh, imposter, hello. Oh, there's a lag on the video. Yeah, we can hear you. Fucking me up. And anybody who has followed me on YouTube long enough knows about my symbol right here. Yep. And then they also know about the tattoo that I got done at Black Sunday Tattoo Parlor. And to top off this delicious drink comedy, That looks like shit. We now have the sixth and final ingredient, which is... Whipped cream, too? And now we got our super... King Cobra Deluxe Angel Mega Drink. 
quite the bombshell. So you're implying you are the true father of Scotty's baby. Yes. What do you think about that, Josh? Uh, I think he's full of shit because I know for a fact he's not. I was there for the nine months hanging out with Tina and Scotty while Tina was pregnant with Scotty's kid. Okay. And, uh, I was there when Tina posted pictures on Facebook. Okay. He wasn't there that one magical night. Obviously not, no, but let me uh, get my guitar ready and then take You're a screw the little man. Take a couple of stuff I don't know if two minutes is fast enough for him to learn how to shred. Josh's friend is a spice head, so I'm not too worried about what he thinks. No, actually, my friend Jeremy is not a spice head. He's never touched it. He says I think the imposter Jeremy King Cobra smoked spice it. on his mom's vagina. Oh my god, imposter? He said, my friend. Oh, wow. Your turn. Is that he, he's, he's, already, he's already going. He's already going. <laughs> wow, imposter. Imposter. How about I cut his dick off and uh, shove it up homeboy Scotty's ass? Right, ass. If he lays a hand on Scotty, I will get involved in this. So okay. will I. Hold on, hold on, guys. Calm down. I'm STD free, so go fuck yourself. <laughs> Okay, so uh, okay, we're gonna hey, go. Sean. We're gonna go joke for joke. Hey, real okay? Sean, how's it going? Hey, what's up? <laughs> what the fuck? Hey, Josh. What? The second that you touched the tip of your wand, the imposter started shaking and hung up the call. That's because he can't handle the fact that I'm the real cobra. And my power is overwhelming for him. Okay, so I have to be honest. Like, with the whole magic thing, I have been kind of skeptical, but uh, that was weird, to say the least. Yeah, sorry for the technical difficulties, but uh, I think that made it more fun. I think it was really funny. Uh... Shortly after this confrontation, Clint with a K announced that King Cobra with a K had passed away. Hey everyone, some of you may not know who I am. I'm Josh's father, Clint Saunders. First, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for all the support. It would have meant the world to Josh. The reason I've come here tonight is to let you know that I've set up a video archive of all of Josh's original videos. The link is in the description below. Josh's passing has been rough on all of us. And I just want to thank each and every one of you for the support. At the beginning of July, Josh opened up about his work and mentioned that his head chef was aware of his trolls. Josh also admitted they had a crush on a waitress. I informed the head chef, who's one of my bosses at work, of my situation that happened at Wendy's. I told him, hey, I got screwed over by Wendy's because of some shit that the YouTube trolls were pulling. I do YouTube, I do YouTube videos on the side as a hobby, you know, and I also mentioned that I haven't mentioned where I worked. I've been very good about keeping that a secret. And the reason why you don't know where I work is because, well, when YouTube trolls found out that I worked at Wendy's, they would call and prank call me at work and shit. And then fans would try to get a hold of me because they want to talk to me. So it was like, you know... <sighs> On the 4th of July, during a very frustrating attempt at playing the national anthem, Josh said that he was going to be spending his money on fixing his shotgun. Now tomorrow I'll be able to do some more work on my album and get my gun fixed. I kept $300, $300 $300 of my paycheck. That should be enough to fix it where I'm going. Believe it or not, YouTube, I keep my temper under control at work. If I feel myself getting angry, you know, take a, mi a minute if I have to, take a deep breath. <sighs> One thing's for sure, I'm definitely building some muscle from where I'm working. Look at that, YouTube. Look at it. Look at it. Look at my arms. If I could bench press 250, that would be sick. 
I'd be big enough that nobody would be stupid enough to fuck with me. Because if you can bench press 250 pounds, that'd be sick. And I mess up on the national anthem. Oh my god, I fucking hate this. <sighs> I repeatedly smash my head into the, into the desk out of sheer frustration because I could be a beast ass shredder at it, and if I can't even play the fucking national anthem, what good am I as a guitar player? Josh would continue to drop more and more money on this repair, and fans speculated that Josh was getting ripped off because he was mentally retarded. I'm a little bit snarker, but I'm otherwise all right. Dropping some more money off on my shotgun in a couple hours. Now that, now that I have a full-time job, I can pretty much save up for whatever the fuck I feel like saving up for. It's my money, my time, you know what I'm saying? What I buy with my money isn't necessarily always gonna be your business, you know. What's up, YouTube? So I dropped off another $200 to the gunsmith down. So, so far I've got $400 down on my gun repair. That's not bad. They've already got the parts ordered for it, so to speak. In late July, one of Josh's idols, Chester Bennington, the lead singer of Linkin Park, ended his own life. This death really affected Josh, as Chester Bennington had spoken openly about being against suicide, and Josh felt it spoke to him, because Josh had these thoughts. Well, Chester Bennington, the lead singer of Linkin Park, committed suicide, and um... Last night when I made a video about it, I sang along to the song by Linkin Park called Shadow of the Day. And YouTube got a hold of me and they said, well, your video is blocked everywhere because and blah, 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 blah. So basically, I got a copyright infringement strike. And honestly, fuck YouTube's double standards, man. I've seen... Well, the reason why I don't commit suicide, YouTube... I have too many people that care about me. Josh would end the month ranting about Donald Trump's failed impeachment. Um, Donald Trump is being ridiculous with his shit right now. Like, he's not letting transgender people fight in the US military and shit, and it's just stupid. Petty bullshit. Well, that tobacco's cash. <laughs> it's only a matter of time, YouTube. Donald Trump keeps acting like a schmuck, eventually he's gonna get impeached. I personally do not understand. YouTube, I don't understand what would make an individual wanna cut off their genitalia and mutilate their body to make themselves something they're not. I mean, you, you can stick chicken feathers up your ass, that doesn't make you a chicken, you know what I'm saying? Much like July, Josh spent the month of August ranting about Chester's death and blowing his money on unnecessary purchases like fixing his shotgun for $400 and a new $100 Cobra cane from eBay, which he would go on to break that same day. What do we got in the box? We got bubble wrap and empty box. This is warning. This is warning. This decorative walking stick is not weight bearing and is not intended for orthopedic use. Thank you for your purchase. Hmm. How much did I pay for this decorative gentleman's cane, you ask? I paid $103, $103 and some odd cents. Check out that sweet setup. That is, that's pretty sick looking. Hell yeah, I dig it. And, um, well, I was taking a stroll with my newly acquired Cobra cane, and uh, I noticed that the head was a little wobbly. But check this out. You see that right there? 
Yeah. That happened. Now you see the hole right there? What are you gonna do? You know, shit happens, otherwise we wouldn't poop, right? Without any discernible provocation, Josh made a video about Stephanie on the 9th, painting her in a most negative way. Perhaps he was bitterly reminiscing about the good times they had together, when she was his girlfriend. The topic of this video would ironically shift to failed attempts at unaliving himself, a cope joke, then back to rejections he'd suffered from the opposite sex. My ex-girlfriend Stephanie is a fucking piece of work, let me tell you. <laughs> oh, he never did anything for me, fuck you. Stephanie tried telling anybody who would listen on Facebook, he never did anything for me. Okay, where to start? Let's see. When I got kicked out of Job Corps, Stephanie wanted to drop out of Job Corps so badly so she could be with me. And I convinced Stephanie to complete the program at Job Corps for me. So that way, when she got out of Job Corps, if a job in her field of study became available, she would be able to get it. So she got tired of working her shitty fast food job, and she wanted a, um, a job in her field of, of training. She'd be able to get it, no problem. Stephanie never had sex until she met me. So basically, Stephanie's first impression of sex was through me. Long story short, Stephanie will use any sad excuse to get laid. And she's kind of a nympho, dude. I managed to make it last two years, which is not bad considering that it was my first girlfriend, you know. In early September, Josh began live streaming on Facebook. These Facebook streams in the beginning were very missable, as Josh would talk about topics he already regularly discussed. Eventually, he began to open up more about his private life, making these streams very valuable for information. Four days later, on Facebook Live, Josh foolishly brandished his shotgun and was subsequently banned for 30 days. Uh, Facebook, so this is how it's going to go down. I'll make videos on Facebook Live and I'll make videos on YouTube. If you don't like it, don't watch my shit. But I'm making videos for myself and for my fans. If you can't handle that, that's your problem, not mine. Yes, I've had a couple of drinks, and a lot of people are trying to treat me like some fucking circus animal, telling me when to perform and make videos. Fuck all that. And you want to keep this empty, of course, because this is Gun Safety 101. Just to show you that it's empty, fuck it, you can see that it's empty. I don't load my double barrel shotgun unless I have to use it. Oh. And then I log into Facebook to post something that I saw on YouTube. And Facebook sent me a message, my page, saying you have a 30 day ban from Facebook because this image does not comply with our community standards or community guidelines, whatever. And they showed me the offending image, and it was a still taken from one of my Facebook Live videos. I'm kicking back in my chair, I got my shotgun like this, sitting on my lap, holding it by the forearm like this, and my hand's all blurry on this side, and my face looks like this. Okay, um, I had a fan ask me, hey, did you get your shotgun fixed? And I said, yeah, and I was just showing it off. It was empty, of course, for safety reasons. Now, if I was lucky enough to find a girl that connected with me, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to make the same mistakes I made with Stephanie, that's for damn sure. But Stephanie will tell anybody who will listen, oh, he never did anything for me. Uh-huh. Stephanie never had sex until she met me, so I gave Stephanie her first impression of sex. Long story short, she's a sad nympho who will use any sad excuse she can to get laid. And, I, and I'm the one that gave her that impression of sex. So, her first impression. And, oh yes, I introduced Stephanie to Damien and Megan, the people she's with right now. So, you wouldn't have met them if you wouldn't have, if I wouldn't have introduced you. So, let's, it's meant to happen, because maybe one day, some smoking hot goth chick's gonna sweep into my life. And it's going to be awesome. And all these haters are going to be like, damn. You know. With a few Facebook streams under his belt, 
Josh decided to stream on YouTube after many unsuccessful attempts and help from Steve, Josh successfully streamed to YouTube on September 11th and ranted about the trolls making fun of him. Alright, how's that? That I hear you. Awesome songs. Yo. Yeah, it's working now. Alright, shout out to uh, Steve for helping me get that shit set up. But yeah, a lot of motherfuckers are like, Oh, he's too stupid to get it set up. He can't figure out YouTube live. And I'm sitting here like, hmm, well then. The next day, Josh complained about a troll who had made a fake Craigslist ad with Josh's phone number and address, and also his nude photos. What would you do if you were straight? And somebody took a bunch of your photos that were leaked on the internet and your phone number somehow and used it to create a fake Craigslist dating ad. And what if all of a sudden you started getting random text messages from unwanted, and I do mean this, unwanted wanted gay strangers like some nasty ass fucking shit man i support gay rights if two dudes want to kiss i don't want to see that shit i don't but if it makes two other people happy who the fuck am i to judge that's just more women for this guy you know what i'm saying youtube and who the fuck's gonna argue with seeing two hot lesbians kiss nobody exactly josh would move on and work on his new album trails of the abyss he would continue to stream on YouTube and make slow progress on his album, dragging it out for over a year. In early October, Josh made a video calling out and making fun of another YouTuber called Dragon Lord Frodo, in response to a clip he'd seen of DLF refusing to watch Josh's videos. I can't show too much of this video, because YouTube will flag this video for harassment and bullying. What is up, YouTube? It's your boy King Cobra back at you with another video. And the Internet Collective sent me a video of some turd talking shit on YouTube. So I want to play the video. Ha ha ha! Look at this fuck! Holy shit, YouTube! Fuck King Cobra! Fuck him! Fuck King Cobra! Everyone's asking me to watch this guy's channel. I'm like, why do I have to watch this guy's channel? I'm gonna talk about your boy that way, yeah. I'm not watching his fucking channel. Your boy. He's like your boyfriend. Oh, 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 okay, okay. You said fuck King Cobra. That's what your mom did last night. This jealous motherfucker can kiss my Asperger's. Jealous of this. Oh, look at that. You wish you could look this good. Oh yeah. Not only that, but look at these arms. Look at them. Look at them. Look at them. You're just jealous of my gorgeous physique, bro. And you're also jealous of my YouTube fame. You're also jealous of the fact that I'm not afraid to be myself. What's his fucking name? He calls himself <laughs> Dragon Lord Frodo. Ooh. Later that day, Josh received a strike on his channel. The video was removed and he was banned from live streaming on YouTube for four months. Fuck you, YouTube. Like, straight the fuck up. How many times have I been bullied on this social media website? How many times have I flagged individuals for bullying me? It never ceases to amuse me, the hypocrisy of social media. Apparently, I'm not allowed to fire or fight back when I get bullied on YouTube. And I get flagged for bullying people on YouTube. Fuck you, YouTube. I'm being personally attacked by somebody on YouTube and as soon as I attack back, I'm the fucking bully. Fuck you, YouTube. Fuck you. Kiss the widest, hairiest part of my Asperger's. Strike one. Ooh, I'm so fucking scared. You know what, I'm not even gonna fight it. What's the fucking point? Dragon Lord Frodo reacted to Josh's video and seemed genuinely puzzled by Josh's outburst. Alright, people, it's Dragon Lord Frodo. 
All right, so it's come to my attention that this guy named uh, King Cobra JFS, he's calling me out on this video because supposedly I made a video about him where I kept where I said fuck King Cobra. Um, I don't even remember making it to be honest. I honestly don't know this King Cobra guy. I really don't, and I really don't have anything against him. Josh reverted back to Facebook and began live streaming multiple times a day. Maybe, maybe noticing I'm missing my spiked collar. That's because it broke. I'll get a new one whenever I can. You know, it's the weirdest thing because I've noticed that whenever I buy a cheap spiked collar from Spencer's or Hot Topic, I've noticed that those uh, cheap spiked collars with their cheap silver, wearing them makes my neck break out, as weird as that sounds. So if I get a spiked collar, it'd probably have to be something a little bit different, but... Oh, uh, my buddy Steve, yeah, I still see him every now and then. Um, he got a new apartment, of which I helped him move in. Both times my buddy Steve has gotten an apartment, I've helped him move into both his apartments. I helped him move into his old apartment, I helped him move out of his old apartment. And not, only, not only did I help him move in and out of his old apart, apartment, but I also helped him with moving his shit into his new apartment. I didn't have to, but that's what homies are for, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Steve and his wife broke up, they're divorced, you know. Single life, am I right? <laughs> You know, this is why I say take your time on the dating scene. If you rush out to find somebody, you're going to end up unhappy with that relationship. You know? Yeah, my buddy Steve just invited me over to his place to have some alcoholic beverage when I get off of work. So, that'll be nice. Well, hopefully, I'm busy and hopefully... hopefully it stays busy enough when I'm at work that they don't send my ass home. But unfortunately, if it gets to be so slow, they, you know what I'm saying? And that's any business, really. You know, if it gets to be too slow, they send your ass home early just because, you know, there's no business, you know. And it sucks, but I understand, you know. Um, but yeah, like I said, you know, if you're a dick to me, I'm a bigger dick to you. Okay, and I'm not the kind of person you want to piss off. I don't need my shotgun or my big muscles to fuck somebody up. You know what I'm saying, Facebook? Like, I have dark powers, goddammit. <laughs> I got a song I'm writing for my new album. And the song is called Laying Black Roses on Cupid's Grave. I can read you the lyrics I have so far, if you're interested. Heart aching in the waking of this rejection, like some sick infection. Should I trust this time, or will she say no, just like all the others? Laying black roses on Cupid's grave. Stepping on my heart like a cigarette butt, gut-wrenching heartache in the wake of hearts shattering like glass when the past matches the present and the future looks bleak and lonely, yeah. Laying black roses on Cupid's grave. That's what I got so far, and I've been piecing it together. October ended uneventfully with a dull Halloween hang with homeboy Scotty and sicko Steve. Hey there. Hi. What's good? Got a dough and we got a buck. Damn. Majestic as fuck. You see that shit, YouTube? You see that shit? Walking around in my costume, smoking a cigar. Oh, I took my mask off temporarily because this costume is very cool, yes, but it's not exactly what you'd call wind-friendly. There you go, happy fucking Halloween, you crazy fuckers. <laughs> it is Oh Hallows Eve. 
This is my costume. Now, what did I do for Oh Hallow's Eve? I dressed up and had a bit to drink. Go to my buddy Scott's, and I had a screwdriver. And then I went over to Steve's and I had some sour apple crown mixed with a bunch of shit, like soda, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So overall, it was not a bad Halloween at all. I was feeling a bit depressed before Hallow's Eve, and now I don't feel so depressed. I feel like a lot better, I guess, you know. In early November, Josh announced on Facebook that he'd finally gotten laid after a six-month dry spell. His father, Clint, was quick to comment and implied this was an overshare. Later that glorious day, Josh tagged a girl named Summer in a Facebook post announcing that he'd made it home safely. Fans quickly pieced together that this was the person he'd broken the curse with and began looking into Josh's new lover. Only days after getting laid, Josh took to lambasting his ex-girlfriend Stephanie on Facebook livestream. He called her a liar, a nympho, and made rude comments about Stephanie's polyamorous relationship with Damien, Megan, and Matt Champy. I found out some interesting information about my ex. Apparently the other day when Stephanie was talking shit about me behind my back, the reason why she was doing it it's because she doesn't want other chicks talking to me. And like, bitch, you're stupid. You are so fucking stupid, okay? I'll admit, the first four weeks, the first four weeks after a breakup always seem to suck. But I've gotten over it. I don't care that she's with Damien and Megan. It's quite sad, to be honest. You know, especially with Damien's fucking age and he's having sex with someone old enough to be his daughter. That just screams midlife crisis, bro. Oh, that just screams midlife crisis, bro. On top of that, and on top of that, Stephanie thinks her pussy's hot shit, but really it's, uh, it's all right. You know what I'm saying? It's not the greatest pussy in the world, but it's certainly not the worst. I mean, you are something else, man. When you're, when you're trying to start drama with your ex like that, like she was trying to do, it's just fucking childish. Stephanie's a fucking gold digger. She wants that gold digger life, but... That's why she's always walking around hmm, like that, you know, all fucking sad shit. And it's very easy to see why Stephanie's drawn to Damien, because Damien's a father and Stephanie grew up without a dad. Therefore, she has daddy issues. Oh, I went there. I fucking went there. I fucking went there. See, at least when Stephanie was talking shit about me, she did, she did it behind my goddamn back. And then acted like, oh, Josh will never find out. And it's like, okay, you want to be like that, you stupid bitch? I can put your shit on blast. When word of this video got back to Stephanie, she clapped back with a Facebook post about Josh being stuck in the past and that he didn't even have the balls to confront her personally. Josh went live on Facebook the next day, alleging that someone had showed up to his workplace, the office bar and grill, to beat him up for his comments about Stephanie. Thankfully for Josh, he was at home and not working that day. But yeah, long story short, the Facebook drama that I'm in right now. Now this whole fucking thing started because one other person started talking shit about me. And when I called them out on their BS, they didn't like it. So they responded to my calling them out. And it pissed them off so much that one person basically tried to have like a bunch of people show up to where I work to try to beat me up and shit. And it's just like... Really, dude, that's kind of immature and cowardly, to be honest. When you can't directly talk to me about the situation or what have you, instead you got to hire a bunch of people to try to start shit with me, all because of some drama on social media. <laughs> I may or may not have a girlfriend, but I can't give too many details away because of the situation with knowing certain people, and it's just like, man, ain't that the biggest load of crap and what's funny if people around town accuse her of being a boy and then because of her short hair but then they see the very feminine ass that she has and they're like oh wait a second stephanie responded via a facebook post a few days later 
saying the situation with Josh was getting out of hand. And then, after almost four years of silence, Stephanie made a video on YouTube and addressed the recent drama Josh had dragged her into. Stephanie spoke about breaking up with Josh and the recent drama that friends of hers allegedly went over to the office to beat up Josh. Hello, I'm posting my side of things. Part of me breaking up with Josh was because, yes, I cheated on him, he cheated on me too, but when he cheated on me, he told me like months later, I had more respect for him and told him the next day. Another part of it was he kind of threatened a friend that it happened with, but he also kind of threatened me in a way. I get he was trying to be joking and, you know, kinky or whatever, but at the same time, when he said that, I wasn't sure if I should take it as a joke or take it seriously. I took it seriously and I left. Uh, I'm doing way better now. I'm way happier. I think he's kind of just stayed stagnant, in my opinion, but that's my opinion. He talks massive shit on me in more of his videos than I have ever talked about him. Like, the whole he made me an info thing is not true. I've pretty much always been one. I've just been more reserved about it until now. I did not intend anyone to go to his work and hurt him. I did not find out about that until, like, the day after, and that was from one of my friends. Uh, what I think about it is I think it's stupid. I don't see any reason why it should have escalated to that. It was just me <laughs> trying to call him out. I didn't intend anyone to get hurt. I'm, like, blown away that it escalated to that point, honestly. I think he has a lot of growing up to do still. He's not a bad person, but because of his low self-esteem. Stephanie would also clarify that Damien is more well-endowed than Josh. In a strange turn of events, Josh's relationship with Summer was already on the rocks after only being together for about two weeks. It's worth noting that Summer labels herself as a scully, which is a strange variation of a furry. Josh's friend, Steve, aka Scrapper Steve, is also a degenerate furry who had a fursona by the name of Mr. Goat and Lyle Dutch Angel Dragon. Watch Lyle's. Watch, watch Lyle's live stream. I have a plan. I can't. Wait, wait till I get off the roof. Get, wait till I get out of the parking garage. Wait for like 10 minutes. I'm gonna do. What? What are you do? This is the adult version of Pinky. Awesome. I have two of them. Awesome. <coughs> Mine's downstairs or else I'd show you. Awesome. You guys are silly. Steve would allege that he was friends with Summer and was attempting to start a furry costume slash cosplay business with her. On Discord, Steve admitted that he and Summer were planning on going on a pseudo date to the mall and discuss their business idea. On November 14th, members of the Discord who were fans of Josh informed homeboy Scotty. Scotty sprang into action and tricked Steve into discussing his alleged attraction for Summer by telling him that he knew of a job opportunity Steve could potentially be interested in. This devious plan would result in Steve saying that he wanted to see if sparks would fly after brainstorming business ideas with Summer. Unbeknownst to Steve, Josh was at Scotty's house listening in as his friend betrayed him. Being a conniving little shit, Scotty went live on Facebook and outed Steve to all of his friends and Josh's friends and fans. Let's get this. Let's get this. All right, come on. What up, guys? What up? Some tobacco? Yeah, yeah. you're going to need it for this bullshit. Yeah. Because it's bullshit. Fresh tobacco from the ashtray. Oh, man. I would have given you... I, I have a little bit of tobacco. I'm not worried about it right now. Huh? Oh, I, I, dude, 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 this is, I'm not assuming shit. Okay, Scotty lied to you. I was there. I heard what you said about me, dude. Yeah, bro. I guess we don't need to be friends then. 
You know, tried to lie to me. Fucking All right, Steve since, since yeah, Steve hold, tried hold, to lie to hold, me. Hold on, hold on, let me say it. Let me say it. All right, what happened was, you know, Josh just found a girlie, right? Yeah. And that's awesome. It's fucking badass. I'm happy for Josh, and she's a good woman, and he deserves her. All right, he he this he doesn't deserve the bullshit. What's coming from? All right, you want to know the bullshit? Y'all want to know the bullshit? The bullshit is. Josh, all right, being a good friend, never been a bad friend, never once. Anytime I fucking needed him, or anytime any of his fucking friends needed him, he was there, all right? He was always fucking there, okay? With that being said, with that being said, Steve, Mr. Goat, whatever you fucking want to call him, goat fucker, whatever, all right? This is what happened. Try to get me, like, try to fuck Josh's girl, dude. Straight up, Steve was trying to get with my girlfriend. Trying his fucking damnedest, dude. Everything in his fucking power. What a real fucking friend. And I hope to God he watches this, dude. Yeah, I fucking lied to him about getting him work. I just wanted to, for him to hear what the fuck he was saying behind his fucking back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Fuck that goat fucker. What a real... Yeah, dude. Like, you know how bad that hurts me? Like, Josh... Josh has bought that man so much shit. Given him so many things. And what a real fucking friend. Fucking hold this, Josh. You know hold what? this. Hold this. What a real fucking friend. You know, the thing of it is, I helped Steve move into his old apartment, I helped Steve move out of his old apartment, and then I helped Steve move into his new apartment. I've helped Steve move in and out of his old apartment and into his new apartment. Okay? Well, how much, how much cigarettes have you given that man? How much money for gas have you given that man? How much fucking food have you shared with that dude? How much shit have you done for that guy, okay? Like, that's what I'm saying, Brody. Yeah? That's not okay, dude. Josh is my my best fucking fr no fuck that he's my brother dude Watch and you're gonna do that to my brother so I'm not gonna let that fucking happen dude effort. not in my I'm fucking power not if I can fucking help it Was yeah you fucking piece of shit dude did he why did you do that to st no 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 Josh Josh what? say something Steve's watching bro Steve why are you trying to fuck my girl man that's not cool he was saying like. Like, Josh was fucking getting her to, for like, forcing her into sex, which, that's a lie. That's a goddamn lie. And a lot of bullshit, dude. And, I like, I don't, I'm sorry for bringing drama to this shit, but, dude, it needed to be done. It needed to be done. Yeah, what Scott said is the truth. Like, I tried talking to Steve about it like an adult, and he basically told me to fuck off. So I'm like, okay, whatever, dude. Corey Stagler says, ask Summer how her trip to the mall was. It was great, thanks. My trip to the mall? Did yeah. you deliver paperwork? I don't know. I, it's fucking stupid. Good fucking red and Steve. Yeah, go fucker. Fucking goat fucker. Fucking go back to fucking... Was it ISIS? Yeah, ISIS, you goat fucker. Why did they have sex with goats? They might as well have. Huh? Oh, poor Joe. He's got the worst of you right now. With my double chin and shit. I kind of can't... Josh, read them. Start reading them off. Who's Moon? That's my... Um... Okay. Is a moon is my um, furry name. Re yeah, read them. You're a furry? I'm a, I'm a we can furry. get together sometime either at you? your place no. or at my place an and we can furry. throw down yeah, some ideas and some drawings. Animals. I like to dress as a furry. Keep going. That's it. Get the good stuff. Dude. Thanks for your support. You make me feel good about myself. That's a lot to take in. Uh, I haven't been a furry for years. Like, I like you and what nothing cute. to happen to I you. I don't know what that means. You dress as an animal. That's it. That's what a real furry is. You go past that, you're going more. <sighs> you're going BC out at least that. Yes. And that's That's not normal. You don't fuck animals, man. So you just dress up? You just dress up. It's like a costume it's, it's cosplay. It's like yeah, anime, you know, like yeah, cosplay, that's exactly yeah. That's like, what my character is. It's a scully. You have an animal okay, so we got these attached to fur. Uh, it's known as a skull. It's a little different than like it's a lot different than normal fursuits. In front of Josh. Yeah, he fucking like, did. He did say that. He Josh, didn't he say that on the fucking phone that he wanted to see Sparks fly? Yes, he did. Uh, Sparks fly. I wonder what the fuck that really means, huh? Huh? Steve literally said, and I quote, "Well, I was gonna invite somewhere over to hang out, you know, to see if Sparks fly, you know." I think what's happening is the fucking bullshit is, even if she was lying, okay? Yeah, she might be in the wrong thought, whatever. But the thing is, is Steve still tried to fuck Josh's girl. That is... Uh, but how do we know Summer's straight up fucking around? Josh just went through her phone 
And plus, you would know that shit was deleted because the time jumps. You know? It says the time. I tried. He's not, he's not fucking getting me. I, hold on. I didn't block him. I blocked him from the chat. I'll, if you want, I can restart the fucking live and do it all over again. In response to Scotty, Steve took to YouTube and explained his side of the story. Steve alleged that Summer was lying and said that Summer told Steve that she felt like Josh was forcing her to have sex with him. And not only that, Josh had bad hygiene. That part is actually true. Josh is very stinky. Believe me or not, I was just trying to get them get some sort of business arrangement set up, but nobody seems to believe me. So, people are out here trying to make me look like a dumbass, which I'm not a dumbass. You know, believe it or not, the man also said to me privately that he wasn't really wanting a serious relationship. The only thing that was in between me and Azamun was business, and that was it. It doesn't make a difference. I didn't physically say that I... I didn't physically ask her out, so until then, until that evidence is made known, I don't believe a damn thing that Cobra says. And I'm going to go down to his house and confront him on this shit that happened. Let me just tell you one thing, Aza Moon. I'm not interested in you sexually. I'm not interested in you intimately. I'm not interested in dating you. So it was just business, nothing more. I wanted to be friends. But if we can't be friends, then that's okay. She sat there and said that she didn't say that Cobra was stinky and all that. She sat there and told me on the phone that Cobra stunk. She had to make him take a shower. He forced her that he forced her into having sex with him. He didn't. He he wasn't cleanly down there in the nether regions. And she got some kind of a bacterial infection from giving him a BJ. Really? She told me that personally over the phone. I know it's the truth, because I've heard it directly from the horse's mouth. Josh has always been a good friend. Scotty is the one that is making this into a big deal. People don't understand Michigan lingo. They, they don't understand the ways I talk. What I meant by sparks fly, that's pretty much a business term that I use to make a business grow. It wasn't anything sexual. It wasn't anything. I'm not trying to get down her pants. I mean, come, what the, what the hell? Come on now. Get with the program. If I really wanted her, I would have had her. A few days later, Josh live streamed and spoke about the drama with Steve. He also threatened to report Steve to the authorities for bestiality. Josh also spoke about Steve's accusations that he was forcing Summer to have sex with him and that he had bad hygiene. If Steve wants to be an immature child and act like he's calling me out on shit, when he continues to press on the issue, if he was not guilty, then why would Steve continue to do these things? You know, Steve's just jealous that I finally have a girlfriend and he doesn't. He tries to get down her pants and as soon as I catch him in, on his bullshit and me and Scott call him out, oh, he got pissed when he got caught. So that naturally, naturally, he's making YouTube videos and Facebook videos calling me out and all kinds of shit. And it's like, well, if what me and Scott said wasn't true, then why do you feel this consistent need to call people out? I tend to think that what me and Scott said was true, otherwise he wouldn't have tried so hard. And of course it's true. I was there when Scott made that conversation with Steve on the phone. And what Steve doesn't realize is that he can get in trouble for talking about zoophilia on YouTube. Just mentioning it is considered premeditated. And the thing he doesn't realize is that he could go to jail for that. Oh yeah, Summer looked it up. Zoophilia is illegal in Wyoming, which means if goat fucker tries fucking a goat, he, he, he could literally go to jail for it. Okay, because goats cannot give consent. What Steve Dunn done, did is rape an animal. It's because of me, Steve, that you have all these fans. Do you think you would have gotten there on your own? 
if I hadn't given you a shout out and told people to check out your fucking channel? No. Yeah, I, I know he is. If Steve would just admit to what he did to me and apologize for it, I might be willing to forgive him. But instead of admitting to what he did, he continues to talk shit. Steve went on to tell Scott that, oh, apparently I force sex on Summer and that she doesn't want to date anymore and blah, 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 and all this other shit. And it's like, okay, S Steve fails to realize that Summer has showed me everything he has said to her in text message and told me everything that he said on the phone to her, so... In the past, Steve had defended zoophilia, a kinder term for bestiality, elaborated in detail to his Discord that he indeed sexed his goat named Moon in the past. Steve even wrote letters to his pet goat Moon, and even tweeted at the then President Donald Trump, asking him what his views on zoophilia was. It's National Coming Out Day, I guess. So... I'm going to say that, yes, I'm a zoo, and I'm proud of it. So, zoo pride, and furry pride. In late November, Summer came by to tattoo Ozzy on Josh's knuckles during a Facebook live stream. The stream, however, was not saved, but we have several screenshots showing off the process. Josh also live streamed again, showing off his new ink. It's gonna go like this. Cause uh, yeah, this tattoo is coming in very, very nicely. Summer was touching up on it earlier and uh, that looks way badass. Um, just got back from walking Summer home, making sure she got home safely, you know. Uh, no, but Summer's a damn good tattoo artist. And I guess that's not half bad. Considering she apprenticed with her dad for a couple months before he tragically passed. I'm also going to talk about some of the shit that Steve's been doing. I haven't seen any of his stupid videos on YouTube as of recently. Well, Steve is kind of a flaky person. What do I mean by that? I'll give you an example. One time Steve calls me and he goes, Hey man, you want a drink? I assumed he was offering to share with me, which he has done in the past, yes. But in this particular incident, when Steve called me and asked, Hey Josh, do you want to come over and drink? And I said, Yeah, I'm always down to drink and have a good time, you know. He's like, Well, can you go to the liquor store for me? And when Steve said, Can you go to the liquor store for me? I thought, Oh, okay, maybe he needs me to uh, walk up to the apartment grab the money, and then walk down to the store because he didn't have a truck at the time. Do you, you need me to come up to your apartment and pick up the money to go get, get it at the liquor store? And Steve goes, well, I don't have any money. I was hoping you had some money. And I was just like, and it, it kind of pissed me off because I was broke, flat-ass broke, when he called me and just he didn't even ask, hey, bro, just, just the way he asked it, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he at, the way he phrased it, when he called me asking me if I want a drink, it's like, first of all, if I had money and I wanted to drink, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to drink. And, yes, I have a couple people I drink with, or one person at the moment, because, you know, it is what it is. And when I drink with my friends, I do it because, you know, I want to hang out and stuff not because you know what i'm saying and that just that that just made me kind of mad you know what i'm saying like but after a couple of weeks i let it slide because i was just like you know it's whatever josh's vibe turned salty and the following couple of streams included rehashing the drama with steve and throwing barbs at stephanie so steve came over to my house earlier and try to apologize, but it really wasn't an apology. But I'm done being friends with Steve. I'm gonna let him, I'm gonna let Steve do his thing, and I'm gonna do my thing. But I'm basically just done being friends with Steve. You know, even after he came over to apologize, he still made a video on YouTube talking shit. And it's like, okay, on top of that, on top of that. You know how Steve's on YouTube talking shit saying that Summer told him I stink? Well, here's the thing, Slick. Summer never called him. Summer's only texted him. 
And after meeting Steve for the first five minutes, Summer was so creeped out. Summer was so creeped out by Steve that she's like, nope. And it didn't take her that long before, before any of this drama on Facebook started off with Steve and his lies and bullshit. Summer blocked his number on her phone way, way, way before this drama even started. I could, but sometimes wasting my magic to hurt people. You know, granted what Steve did was pretty shitty. I think if there were people who did way worse, you know what I'm saying? It just seems like a waste of time. You know what I've learned being a nice person? You get fucked over the most. It's the most unfortunate thing. You could be one of the nicest people in the world, but people take advantage of your kindness and it sucks. The friendship between Josh and Steve was tenuous, but Josh sent an olive branch and put forward the idea of a peace treaty with Steve. So let's get the record straight. Steve claims that me and Scott threatened him. We never once threatened him. I literally still can't believe the Steve's on YouTube continuously talking shit. Like, I want to publicly agree to stop talking shit about him on YouTube if he agrees to do the same about me. And not just me, but homeboy Scotty as well. On the for real, I will make a peace agreement publicly on YouTube. And I will agree to stop talking shit if he does. Now, before Steve, Scott, and myself are no longer friends, before all this happened, Steve gave Scott a computer. Steve forgot to delete all of the files on said computer. And Carolyn basically saw the video of Steve fucking the inflatable goat, and she said it was nasty and small. So whatever fucking dirt Steve thinks he has on me can't be as bad as knowing the people who have that video. So if Steve wants to make my life a living hell, I can make his ten times worse. I could have the entire fucking internet laughing at his sorry ass right now. If you really want to go down that route. And I don't think Steve wants that. I don't think Steve wants the entire internet to see that. For all it would take is for someone to release that video to a porn website and it, it would be done. I personally didn't see the video, but Carolyn said Steve was really tiny. I still don't want that released to the public just because, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'd feel bad for the guy, even though he was a douche and tried to fuck my girl. You know what I'm saying? I guess that shows you I have more heart than he does, but what the fuck ever, right? It's Steve's so-called lies that I hit Stephanie. That That's his so-called dirt on me. Okay, in the two years that I was with Stephanie, you never saw a bruise mark on her. Never. And basically just saying, like I said, I agree to no longer talk shit on Steve if he no longer talks shit on me or Scott. That's fair, you know. Just from now on, you know, I'm not going to talk about him on my channel. So hopefully he can do the same. I don't like the fact that we're fighting like this, to be honest. It's, it's kind of shitty, dude. That it came to this, but let me uh, give uh, Scotty a call real quick here. Yo. Hey, I'm doing Facebook Live. I got you on speaker. What's up? Dude, Steve uh, admitted to the peace treaty. He accepted the peace treaty. He did? Yeah. That's good. And yo, you should uh, put me on speakerphone. All right, I'll get it real quick. I don't think we should let him in either, dude. Like, and then it's kind of fucked for him to get somebody who's not even involved with the shit involved with it, dude. That is kind of messed up. And he probably doesn't know the whole story because Steve probably lied to him, but, you know. Yeah, that is funny how he doesn't see anything wrong with it. <laughs> I do apologize for that summer. I got a little too drunk at my place, and then I passed out. I was going to have a couple of drinks and go over and hang out with Summer on Thanksgiving, and... Unfortunately, I got too drunk and then I passed out and completely spaced it. It wasn't intentional, I assure you. Well, why would you let Mr. Goats ruin your love for tattooing, Summer? I don't understand it. Okay, here's the thing, people. We're not going to start attacking Steve again. 
We just made this peace treaty bullshit on YouTube, so yeah, I'm pretty much encouraging all my fans to just leave Steve alone. If you're going to watch his videos, watch them. If you're going to subscribe to his channel, subscribe. But don't verbally harass him. Like, like I, I don't need more shit in my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm tired of drama on social media anymore. After threatening Steve to release a sex tape of him fucking an inflatable goat, which would end up being posted by homeboy Scotty, Steve responded with his own set of conditions to Josh's proposed peace treaty. So Cobra wants a peace treaty. Peace treaty. Something going around. Rumor going around that uh, Scotty has a video about me. So the only, re the only real way I will make a peace treaty with anyone is if they agree to my terms. And that person is King Cobra. I will do a peace treaty with King Cobra under one condition. That supposed video of me that Scotty has needs to be deleted off that computer that I sold Scott a long time ago. And if that can happen, then I believe maybe I will do a peace treaty. Because a true peace treaty is where two people come to an agreement and they sign paperwork. And once that paperwork is signed, then I'll have it stamped by a notary that makes it an official document. Josh rejected Steve's proposed stipulations and homeboy Scotty would go on to post the video of Steve getting it on with a goat. I'm obviously not going to show this video. So you can find it yourself, you sicko. Oh, sassy goat girl. Yeah, it feels so good. Fucking Steve, man. You see what happens, people, when I try to be an adult, and even though I did nothing wrong, even though I did nothing wrong, I still try to make a peace treaty with that goat fucker. And now he's making a video saying he doesn't want to do the peace treaty anymore. Well, fuck him, dude. Well, the treaty was basically me saying that I agree not to talk shit on Steve if he agrees to not talk shit on me or Scotty. And I should have been more specific. I should have included my girlfriend in the equation, but what are you going to do? The fact that he's sitting there saying that he doesn't want to do the peace treaty on YouTube anymore is kind of stupid. You know, so how the fuck do I know he's not going to go back on his paper treaty? See what I'm saying? So fuck that. I'm not signing anything, dude. Carolyn says, why don't you just ignore Steve and you go your separate ways? Don't sign a stupid piece of paper. Just leave him in the past. You learned your lesson. Exactly. Yeah, I'm not talking shit about Steve. I'm just saying, like, I'm not going to sign his goddamn paper. The peace treaty agreement was on fucking YouTube. I mean, Steve has marijuana paraphernalia stacked up in his house and occasionally his nieces and nephews come over to visit so if i wanted to be a huge dick but i'm not going to go down that route because i don't think that would be fair to uh, steve's brother if his if steve's brother's kids got taken away so fuck that uh, is this the nail polish you were speaking of yes it's what you doing? I'm making a live stream while I let my phone charge. Ah. Yeah. Then, then I'm gonna make cheesy ramen noodles when my phone's fully charged. That sounds interesting. Does it? Yeah. I'd be happy to share some with you. <laughs> you go home, sweetie. Oh yeah, I forgot. You work tomorrow, and yeah, I'm buggy too. Long. Oh. But doesn't the summer look nice today, folks? Yeah, looking all, looking all fancy smancy. Yeah. You wanna walk me out? Yeah, I can walk you out. It's only fifteen degrees out. It's not cold. That's good. Oh god, I get after rejecting Steve's new conditions, and Summer accusing Steve of making fake YouTube channels to harass her, 
Josh announced that he and Steve had patched things up, all thanks to Steve's brother. So I had a conversation with Steve, a.k.a. Mr. Goats, earlier, and we've agreed to patch things up. We're going to go out on the first, have some coffee. I, mean, I sat here in my apartment and I discussed things with Steve, and honestly, I think it was just a big misunderstanding. I know sometimes people say things and they mean one thing, but it comes out sounding like another thing. I've done that myself on numerous occasions. You know, it's fucking Christmas for fuck's sake. I'm trying to patch things up with Steve so that we're not doing this crap. Do you think I like having that much more drama added to my fucking life? The answer is no, I don't. You know, like I said, if Steve wants to go out and have coffee with me, him, his brother, and his brother's wife, I'd be down for that. You know what I'm saying? Discuss things like mature adults and... I know I especially do things when I get angry, and sometimes when I get angry at one person, I'll drag somebody else into it, and that's not right of me. So, yeah. Like, Steve's brother is a good dude, so that being said, you know, I pretty much deleted all my Facebook Live videos, because I wasn't sure which one I was, you know... <clears throat> You might see a video in the near future of me on Steve's channel or Steve on my channel, you know. With Josh having mended fences with sicko Steve, Summer suddenly became skittish and essentially ghosted him. Perhaps she felt bad about the poorly done tattoo on Josh's knuckles, or maybe it was something else. To make matters worse, Josh's fresh new Aussie tattoo began to fall out and fade. I wanted to hang out with Summer when I got off of work, and I tried calling her. I called her like four times, and she didn't answer her phone. It went straight to voicemail. So, like, I don't know. I will say this, though. People on YouTube can be really... People on YouTube can be really stupid. You think impersonating my girlfriend on YouTube is going to get to me? Fuck no! If anything, it's just going to get your stupid account blah-ha-hocked. It's not like Summer to not answer her phone. Usually when I call her, she picks up. Yeah, I called Summer like four times to let her know, hey, I'm off work. You want me to come over to your place or you want to come over to mine, you know? I, I, I don't just want to walk over there uninvited. That's kind of rude. Even if she is my girlfriend, I'm not just going to walk, I'm not just going to walk over there uninvited. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to read too much into it right now. Because it is like almost 10 o'clock at night. She's probably sleeping with her phone off. But if I don't hear from her tomorrow or the next day, I'm going to be like, okay, what's going on here? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, fuck me. No, 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 no. Fuck, 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 fuck. Look at that shit. God damn it. My tattoo's fading. Motherfucker, that pisses me off. Ah, oh, son of a... <laughs> I know, right? What the shit? <sighs> you got to be fucking kidding me. My tattoo's falling off. Unfrickin' believable, man. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm gonna have to now. God damn it. Yeah, I don't know how this happened, honestly. Like, it was doing just fine. And now my fucking tattoo's fading. What the shit? I'll go to Black Sunday Tattoo Parlor and see if they can touch it up. Hey, Summer, it's Josh. Um, just let you know I got off of work. Uh, if I don't hear back from you tonight, hopefully tomorrow. So, uh, I guess I'll, uh, talk to you later. Love you. Bye. Josh would update his fans on Facebook and let them know that his Aussie tattoo faded because Summer used water-based ink. A few days later, at the end of the month, Summer touched up Josh's Aussie tattoo. After the drama with Steve was over, Josh and Summer reconnected and exchanged Christmas presents. Josh gave Summer an allegedly vintage 90s Pikachu blanket, which he'd purchased from his good friend Scotty for $60. After Scotty took it down from his wall, of course. 
and Summer bought Josh an autographed picture of Ozzy Osbourne. Legitly, people, an autographed picture signed by Ozzy Osbourne himself. I mean, you really can't beat that. Now put your knuckles. It was business as usual in December for Josh. He streamed multiple times a day on Facebook to a handful of fans. Although these streams were gated, the YouTube user Anonymous Casper Wyoming, aka Oprah, re-uploaded all of Josh's streams so they could be accessed to those who weren't friends with Josh on Facebook. As you can imagine, Josh wasn't too thrilled that his streams were being re-uploaded. In early December, Summer chatted in Josh's Facebook stream and complained about being bullied by her family members. Oh, Summer, I'm sorry to hear it. And Summer, you're not going to have a hard time keeping me. I did tell you I was going to come over tomorrow, didn't I? After I got done, after I got done grocery shopping. And I'm sorry to hear that you lost a couple of family members. I really am, Summer. I'm sorry to hear you lost a couple of family members. That's some hard shit. Hey, Summer, it's Josh. I'm sorry to hear about your family. And, you know, I'm reading your, your chat right now. It says here that you got into a fight at the mall over some stupid shit. Um, sorry to hear it. I'll, def I'll definitely be able to talk to you tomorrow when I get done doing my, uh, my grocery shopping. Um, but yeah, if you don't call me back tonight, I guess I'll continue talking to you in chat. And then hopefully I'll see you tomorrow. Love you. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. No, Summer, you're not a bad mother. You're actually an excellent mother. It's the circumstances in which you were placed due to somebody else. Somebody else's bullshit got your kid taken away. You know this. I know this. Not everybody knows the story, and they don't need to know the story. She can't deal with these trolls anymore. Getting into a fight at the mall over some stupid shit. Like, this is ridiculous. I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I finally have a girlfriend that makes me happy. And people gotta fucking troll her and bully her. And, and so fucking frustrating, Facebook. I finally find a chick who's into similar music. The same, she likes the same two colors I like. She likes reptiles like I do. And they seem to click really well together. And yet people just can't fucking, like, leave it the fuck alone. They gotta, they gotta fucking troll and troll and troll and troll and troll and try to break us apart. I'm just, I'm fucking sick of it. Well, God damn it, Summer. Fucking, I'm trying to call you. Let's talk this out. We don't need to go that route. Fuck suicide, Summer. You're better than that. Come on now. I'm glad you didn't do it. I would have been so hurt. And if I wasn't ten ways tipsy, I would walk over to your house right now and cuddle the fuck out of you to make you feel better. But I've been drinking, so I don't want to risk a public intox charge, to be honest. Ah oh, yes, a circle of protection on my girlfriend's summer made her ribs and back start feeling better. Sadly for Summer, Josh's trolls had harassed her on Facebook by sending her a photoshopped picture of Josh having forceful anal sex with a juggalo man named Crazy Locke. On December 12th, tragedy struck. YouTuber Angry Grandpa passed away. What's going on, you guys? It's King Cobra JFS with another video. Right now, I'm not having the best of nights right now, man. Angry Grandpa passed away, YouTube. Yeah. Oh, and uh, Summer broke up with Josh. Lost one of my favorite YouTubers, and my girlfriend broke up with me. One of Summer's exes hacked her fucking Facebook account and dating me as a YouTube celebrity, I guess. She couldn't handle the pressure. And I don't want to put Summer through any more depression, so at least she agreed to be my friend. You could see how happy that old man was. He'd been through so much in his life. And he had people around him that cared. Josh would go on to blame his fame for the breakup, but fans speculated that it had more to do with the Steve drama. Even though Josh was feeling down now that he was single, 
Josh managed to score himself a full-time schedule at work again. Yo, fuck the sex doll and fuck dating, and I'm going to get a car and be done with it. Like, I get so sick and tired of getting my hopes up just to get let down every fucking time. Getting my fucking car, hopefully, when I start saving up. And now that I have more 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 hours at my job, I'll be able to do that. I score a couple more days, so that's what's up. I get two days a week off, and I work pretty much, yeah. Oh, my buddy Alex came over to hang out for a bit. He doesn't have to say anything if he doesn't want to, you know. But I came over to kind of, you know, let him talk, let him talk things out, you know. Because I realize that my struggles are not as bad as someone else's. You know, I've always realized that, Facebook. Shortly after this stream with Warlord, Josh was banned once again on Facebook. What up, though, YouTube? So check this out. I got a 30-day ban on Facebook for some shit that I didn't do. Facebook accused me of smoking pot on Facebook Live when I wasn't. I was smoking my tobacco out of my pipe like I normally do for YouTube. As of yesterday, I have a 30-day Facebook ban. So, I'll take that time to post a little bit more videos on YouTube. Josh would end the year working on his new album. Working on my new album, if you will. So the eighth album is getting close to getting done. Very, very, very close and celebrated reaching 6,000 plus subscribers on YouTube. I now have 6,276 subscribers on YouTube, so I figured it'd be a good time to create some uh, new t-shirts. 2017 was a very memorable year. We got to see many classic videos and moments, like the short-lived life of Fun Size Felicia, and Josh's heated feud with King Cobra with a K. Although Josh's sex life this year was lacking, he more than made up for it with the support from his close friends Alex Anderson, Scotty and Warlord. Not everyone would prove to be a true friend however. Steve betrayed Josh's friendship by trying to get with his ex Summer. In spite of all the drama and Scotty's attempt to stoke the flames, Josh forgave Steve and they've been friends ever since kind of. Josh's relationship with Summer was brief. Little did he know, it would be another six years before he could toss his sausage down another sugar hallway. Coming up in the next chapter. Although Josh was working full time towards the end of 2017, 2018 would prove much more stressful for him. Josh would go on to butt heads with the head chef. Seemingly employing a tactic similar to Wendy's, they were subsequently reducing his hours drastically, perhaps trying to get him to quit on his own accord. It worked, and Josh finally found the initiative to start his own online business, selling wands. Thank you very much for watching, and please stay tuned for part 8. And thank you very much to my members, and a very big special thank you to Baby Moth for helping me write this episode. Love you. And I would also like to give a huge shout out to Exhumed Visions. Go to exhumedvisions.com and buy some sweet merch.